Hi, thank you for joining me today. If this is your first time, I'm Matthew. This is Fairy Godfather Knits, a YouTube channel where I talk about knitting, design, creativity. And today I am coming to you from Banff, Alberta, Canada. As you can see, we got some snow last night. I also wanted to say a warm welcome to all my new subscribers, um, many of whom came to me through Leanne the Nitty Stew. Hi, welcome, I'm so happy to have you here and I'm so glad you found me and thank you to everyone who has said hello in the comments. Uh, it means so much to see those, so welcome to my community. I am wearing the Dustland sweater by Stephen West. Uh, if you caught my last episode, which I will link here, I had a bit of a blocking disaster with it. A lot of you are leaving me comments with advice about whether to try to shrink it or just frog it back and redo the ribbing and so on. Today, I've just worn it. I decided to tuck it in and I'm actually kind of happy with this look. Um, it is a holiday today here in Alberta um, and many of the provinces in Canada, though not all of them. Uh, it is a holiday called Family Day, and so I thought it would be a perfect day to introduce you to somebody. My name is Sophia. My name isn't Sophia. Yeah! If you didn't see previous episodes where I talked about it, uh, Sophia, who you've just met, is my biological daughter. I was a known donor to a good friend of mine named Emma who recently gifted me these fabulous earrings. Um, and Sophia is our daughter. Sophia calls me daddy. Um, I live in Toronto, Ontario. They live close to 3,000 kilometers away in Kelowna, BC. So we don't get to see each other all that often, but I'm just coming from a visit. And I thought family day would be a perfect day to um, go a little bit back in time and show you guys everything that I've ever knit for Sophia. If you caught my first episode, I told you a bit about my, how I came to knitting and Sophia was that way. I wanted to knit something to send out to her uh, when she was born. She was born on March 16th, 2020. So yeah, I'm just gonna take you through uh, the things I have knit for her um, from before she was born up until now. And I thought it would be short, but there's actually way more than I thought. So let's get right into it. And I'm gonna um, also intersperse a few clips from my recent visit to see her because Sophia is a ham who loves the camera and um, her mom is totally cool with her being on YouTube and Instagram and whatever. Sophia actually has her own Instagram. Uh, it is at Sophia Peter Elizabeth. Uh, so, you know, you can catch her there as well. Uh, anyway, let's get started. So I think a lot of us when we first start knitting are drawn to kits, or at least I know I was. There's just something comforting, I don't know, about knowing you're buying something that has the pattern, the instructions, the needles, the yarn, and all that work is done for you. It's the right amounts of everything. It's colors that go together. It's, you know, everything the way the designer intended it and all you have to do is follow the steps. And that was what made me feel like I was even able to try knitting. I, um, I did Lego a lot as a kid. I'm good at following rules and instructions, or at least was for some phases of my life. And um, yeah, so the one I found, uh, the website is called knitka.com. I don't know, <laughs> like, because in Canada, our website suffix is .ca, I always thought of it as knitca.com, but I realize that's probably not what it is. Anyway, it's knitca.com, so K-N-I-T-C-A.com. And they have, like, a fair number of kits on there. Uh, this one is called the Happy Baby Hoodie, and I just kind of, I wanted a happy baby in a hoodie. It just felt so perfect. And um, it's, I used their, like the yarn that comes with the kit is their own branded yarn. Um, so it is the Nitka Wavy in the color Lilac. I put a picture of this in earlier episodes, but I will show some more now. 
Um, you can see um, Emma as well holding Sophia soon after she's born in that first one. And then um, there was another time she put it on for like a spring. Uh, I think there were some ladies coming over. So yes, the this Happy Baby Hoodie kit came with a DVD, if you can imagine such things. <laughs> and remember, this was only 2020, but I don't know, something about a DVD just seems so archaic now. But uh, yeah, it was a great little course and it takes you from your very first cast on through the whole process. Um, it is a seamed garment. So here is a picture of it before it was seamed. Uh, and then obviously, you know, it got finished. And then I love knitting so much that I just, it was like, well, now I'm done. Like now what am I gonna knit? Like I just needed, I just obviously needed to be knitting all the time. Um, so I went to the LYS in Picton, Ontario, which is the Rose Haven yarn shop. Um, met a lovely person there whose name I do not recall, but she's the one who told me about Ravelry. Uh, she gave me some baby yarn. And I think that this hat pattern, this hat pattern, I don't know the name of it. I think it was included in the Nitka kit, like as an advertisement for an other kit, or it was like a free pattern that came with that kit. Um, because otherwise I don't know where I would have found a pattern. I didn't, I didn't really understand how to use Ravelry um, and I would have been sort of intimidated. So I think I just went, I probably took some of the Nitka wavy yarn, went to her in Rosehaven and said, what do you have that's for babies that's close to this? And she gave me these ones and then I, I just made a bunch of those hats. I only sent one to Sophia. Here's Sophia in the hat. Um, but yeah, and then from then on, I was just hooked. So then, I went straight to Google and I found We Are Knitters. I'm gonna have more to say about We Are Knitters in the future, uh, maybe in next week's video, but for now, I'm just gonna say that they also have a lot of kits and they are a really great place for beginners to start. Anyway, for Christmas of 2020, I knit the uh, Nordic Flower hat and the Nordic Flower sweater. These are both from We Are Knitters. They both use their petite wool um, and they were both kit. You can see this pattern has some baubles in it. Again, looking back, I was surprised about, wow, I could do a bobble even then. And then soon after, so in sort of early 2021, um, I started on the almond sweater, um, which was my first time ever doing lace. Uh, this was again from We Are Knitters. It's a seamed pattern. So I was really into like laying out all the pieces before I seamed it for cool photos. I don't know why, but um, yeah. So there you can see uh, what it was like. Um, okay, and then I had completely forgotten that I had also knitten, knitten, I had also knitten, I'd, I'd also, I had also knitted some toys. Um, so I don't know, I don't have a clue how I found these, um, but I'm so glad that I did. And I remember having these all laid out on the tables there. It was my first time ever encountering uh, DK yarn. And I thought that it being called like DK stands for double knit. And I thought that meant that that kind of yarn had to be held double, which is not the case. Um, anyway, so this company is called Sardines for Tea. Uh, I can find them on Etsy and they're on Facebook. So they're around Sardines for Tea. You should be able to find them, but I don't think they have their own site, if that makes sense. Um, so again, these are kits. I don't know why I picked the donkey or the sheep specifically, but this is Nell the donkey and Mabel the sheep. So I'll just throw up photos of them in progress and whatever as I talk. Um, I did Mabel for, no, I did Nell the donkey first and Mabel second. Um, I should say that in my recent visit to Kelowna, both Nell and Mabel are still in action. Uh, they're still all together, although uh, Nell's poncho seems to have gone missing and probably Mabel's bag has as well. I didn't check that. But uh, yeah, but they're still there and they're still together. And I think after almost three years, that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, again, these were kits. They came with the stuffing, they came with the needles, they came with everything you need. And it was really fun to make toys. I'd actually like to do it more. Um, I would like to crochet, I'd like to get into am amigurumi, am I saying that right? Um, 
but it just hasn't been part of my fiber journey thus far. But you know, we have nothing but time. <laughs> So then, I think it was around this time that I started finding uh, Knitting YouTube, and somehow, but I am thankful to the universe and the powers that be, um, I found Kelly Menzies. <laughs> she is known as Row Row and Cades, Row Row and Cades. It's the nicknames of her two kids, Row Row and Cades. Um, Kelly Menzies, I love her. <laughs> I. Love her. I love her patterns. I love her YouTube channel. I just cannot speak highly enough. Hi, Kelly, if you're watching. So I found this YouTube video on the Kelsey dress, and Kelly just takes you through the whole thing. And I think it was the first time I ever thought to myself, I can do that. Like, I know how to do that, and this is a step-by-step instruction that I can follow along. And uh, so I did, I got some cotton yarn and I made it, I made a Kelsey dress. Uh, so I made it in pink and then I can't remember exactly, um, I can't remember exactly which needles the pattern calls for or what the gauge is or how I was off. You can see I made mistakes with the lace in um, the skirt of the pink one. And so when I went, I did it again in red, and I think I went down a needle size? I'm not sure. Um, but you can see um, the difference in the gauge. Here they are uh, both beside each other. And this second one I did in the sort of tomato red in the different gauge. This is the one that got worn the most. Uh, although there's also this hilarious thing <laughs> when I send people knits that they often put them on backwards and or backwards and inside out. So in all of these photos, Sophia is wearing the dress inside out, by which I mean the pearl bumps are showing instead of the stockinette, the smooth stockinette side. Um, but that's okay. It looks great in reverse. Um, so here are some pictures of her uh, playing in it. Also, Emma did a photo shoot of Sophia wearing the red dress, and she now has mounted pictures of them up on her wall. I have a picture of it that I will show you here. And so one of the cutest things that happened when I was there was um, Sophia ran up to me and she showed me and she said, that's me. And I said, oh yeah. And she said, I was just a little baby. And it was so cute the way she did it. And then of course I tried to get her to repeat it. And of course it never goes the same way. But here's a little clip of us talking about those pictures. What were you telling me about them? Who is that? Me. It's you? And are you big or little? Little. You're just a little baby? Yeah. Can you show me how big you were? Okay. And what are you wearing? I wore wearing a red dress. A red dress? And who made it for you? Uh, you. Yeah. And who am I? Daddy. Yeah. And then right around that time, uh, Kelly put a call out, a testing call, for her Moonglade dress, and I was lucky enough to be accepted as a tester. So I had the honor of test knitting her Moonglade dress pattern. Cannot speak highly enough of Kelly Menzies of Rotor and Cades. Please go check her out right now. Um, but I did this uh, mini unbearable hoodie. It is super cute. I think I found it through Stephen and Penelope, actually, through Stephen West, and uh, it, it's in his website. Uh, so the Mini Unbearable hoodie, it was also my first, I think this was my first time doing stranded color work. It was my first time sort of substituting my own yarns. Um, you can see maybe I used that earth monochrome that I'm obsessed with. That's what the um, gray parts are and the pink. Um, but then I used some stuff from my stash to do the bears. And I really loved how this turned out. I will say it was probably a little small. It, because it was stranded color work and it was my first time, it was very tight. It didn't have any um, stretch or give on the inside. And I never got to see a picture of Sophia wearing it. Um, Emma did mention to me that Sophia was in a phase where she didn't like hats and like the hood was too much like a hat. But I just, I never saw it again or heard of it again. And I just have to conclude that it was too small or too tight. 
and that Emma didn't have the heart to tell me, <laughs> which honestly is okay. Uh, so leading up to Christmas 2021, I really wanted to make something and I ended up finding um, this Drops Miss Cookie pattern. So this is a free pattern. Uh, if you just Google Drops Miss Cookie, you'll find it. So there's the hat and then there's the dress. They're both free, they're both called Miss Cookie, they're both from Drops. And for this, I think I used um, Barocco yarn, just uh, Barocco DK. Um, I don't have the color numbers handy. I was really nervous about it, but it turned out so well. Um, I'm so happy with it. Um, you can see again, I'll do my seeming photo <laughs> as I always do. Um, something happened with the straps. Like obviously the straps are meant to be identical and I either missed a row or added a row or something on one of them. So the pattern ended up different. Um, no one else seems to notice that, but of course to me it is very glaring and very obvious. But I kind of like, if you haven't noticed, being a little bit unique and a little bit different. So here is Sophia in that Miss Cookie dress and hat, or I think she's probably not wearing the hat. Um, as previously discussed, she does not enjoy hats. Um, so anyway, but here she is wearing the dress in a variety of poses. It was a real um, crowd pleaser. People were quite impressed. Um, and it wasn't, or I didn't experience it as really difficult to do. The straps are adjustable, so it could theoretically continue to fit her. So anyway, after the uh, Miss Cookie Christmas dress, the next thing that I did is a, a penguino. So if you've been watching the channel, you know I am a big fan of Stephen West. I have done a penguono before, which is a very famous pattern of his that a lot of YouTubers have talked about and done. I did one of those for my brother. I will maybe do an episode introducing you to him and showing you that piece at some time, at some point. Um, I'll put a little picture of it here, why not, as a preview. And so uh, Stephen also has uh, a kid's version of this pattern called a penguino. We like little, just a little baby, as Sophia would say. So a penguino. And I knit one of those with uh, stashy stuff that I had. And the result is very Easter-y, very uh, toddler girl, very <laughs> unicorns and rainbows. I thought I had more pictures of it. I couldn't really find any. Here are the ones that I have of Sophia wearing the penguino. This I know she loved and got a lot of good wear out of. So yeah, I was really happy with the um, penguino. And then um, I haven't done much since then. That was this past April, April 2022. And since then I haven't, I think largely because uh, Sophia was growing so fast and I just saw how quickly she grew out of things, how much wear and tear goes like into them. In terms of the time, the cost of the time, let alone the cost of the yarn, it just doesn't always seem worth it to hand knit things for um, little kids, little toddlers. Um, Emma was saying, you know, you should really just stick to accessories or just tunic style things because she grows so fast and she grows out of things so fast. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm just slowing down and I think also I would maybe want to design for her. I have an idea for a cardigan that is sort of Kelowna focused, if that makes sense. I also have an idea for a unicorn dress that I wanna make for her um, because she loves unicorns. There's stuff running around up here, but I, I don't know, I'm just not ready to execute on any of that yet. Sorry, there is one other thing that I made for her. Um, this is the last one, and it is again from We Are Knitters, and it is the uh, unicorn pom-pom beanie. Uh, Sophia is loving all things unicorn these days, so for Christmas I sent out a um, unicorn head piggy bank, and a sequined unicorn purse, but I did want to put just one little, one little hand knit item in there. So yeah, I did this uh, We Are Knitters unicorn pom-pom beanie, and uh, here are some photos of her wearing it. Again, I believe in the first photo it is inside out and backwards, but hey, you know, who's, who's checking? These things don't matter. Um, and then, funnily enough, when I was there, when I got in the car, the first thing I saw was this. 
Emma caught me taking a picture of it and she said, are you gonna badmouth me to all of your friends? And I said, no, I'm gonna put it in my YouTube video about all the hand knit things I made for Sophia. And she said, oh, that's funny, that's okay. So she really emphasized to me that the reason it is in a wadded lump at the bottom of the passenger side of the car is because it was actually getting worn and getting played with and was part of life. And that's just sort of where things end up when you have a toddler, which I absolutely appreciate. Um, so those are all of the things I have made for Sophia. Um, thank you much, so much for joining me today. I hope this was interesting to you and I am going to let Sophia uh, and I have the uh, final words. Here you go. Can you say, please subscribe? Please subscribe. Please like. Please like. And please share. Please share. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you next time. See you next time. Happy knitting. Have a meeting. Bye. 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 Let's break.